Plato. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the friend of the unfortunate, enemy of criminals. A mysterious, all-powerful character, a problem to the police. But a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask in a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk but stronger than steel. Today's episode of The Blue Beetle is entitled The Invisible Ghost. Patrolman Dan Garrett, who in secret operates as The Blue Beetle, today matches brains and brawn with a cowardly, ruthless gang of crooked slot machine racketeers. Can he spike their plans to flood the city with crooked gambling devices? Will he be able to uncover the mysterious leader who directs their activities? What is behind their endeavor to install their machines at John Doerr's carnival? As our story opens, Patrolman Dan Garrett is visiting his old friend and advisor, Dr. Franz. Danny, I've been studying up on slot machines. Yes? You find out anything interesting? Well, uh, I'm convinced that the difference between an honest machine and a dishonest or crooked machine is very slight. In fact, I'd say the difference was purely academic. What do you mean, Doc? Well, of course, you realize I'm referring now to nickel and dime or quarter in the slot machines from which your return, if any, will be a handful of coins. Yeah. That doesn't include vending machines for candy, chewing gum, cigarettes, etc. Oh, no, 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 of course not. I'm speaking about those machines where you put a coin in the slot, push down the lever, and pictures of fruits or birds or playing cards whirl around and stop in different combinations. Yeah, I understand. Well, if certain combinations come up, a certain number of coins will be returned to you. Sometimes as many as 40 may come out. Uh, that's called a, a jackpot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've seen some of the boys in the force play the machines in Charlie's cigar store. And uh, how often do they hit the jackpot? Uh, I don't know. Not often, I'm sure. Yeah, precisely. Those machines are fixed in advance to release a jackpot every, once every thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, yes, even every hundred thousand times. Hmm. In other words, if you were the only one playing the machine, you would have to put in one thousand or more coins before you'd win the jackpot. Hmm. But a nickel apiece, that's... Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars to win two dollars. Why, there must be enormous profits in those machines. Yes, yes, there is. Now, now let's suppose the machines these racketeers are trying to install are reasonably honest. Say, uh, one thousand to one, uh, which is average. Yeah. In a place like John Doerr's Carnival, each machine should average two thousand players a day. Let's say ten machines were installed throughout the area. Well, that's conservative. Yes, yes, I know, uh, but let's be conservative. Ten machines would get a play of 20,000 players a day, and the average amount spent on such machines is about 20 cents per person. Well, that's 100,000 nickels at 1,000 to 1 ratio. Uh, the machines would pay back 100 jackpots, or about $200. Yes, but the intake would be $4,000. Precisely. Intake, $4,000. Outgo, $200. And crooked operators will go to any lengths to make profits like that. Uh, just a minute, Dan. I'll see who it is. Okay. Hello, Doc. Is the pride of the police force here? <laughs> hey, if you mean Patrolman Dan Garrett, hey, he's waiting for you, Manigan. Hello, Mike. Got the car outside? Yep. Are you ready, Daddy? Ready and waiting. So long, Doc. Those crooked slot machine operators are going to get a big surprise when they run up against Officer Manigan and Patrolman Dan Garrett. Come on, Manigan. Let's go. <laughs> Off on special assignment, sped Dan Garrett and Officer Manigan in the police car. What is their destination? What will they find when they get there? Will it be a simple routine cleanup job? Or will the Blue Beetle have to swing into action? Within ten minutes, the police car bearing Dan Garrett and Mike Manigan is pulling up inside the gates of John Doerr's car. Well, here we are at the carnival, Mike. Yeah, where do we head first? Now let's look around a bit. Okay, Danny. Gentlemen, step one up and try your hand at only a dime a tenth part of a dollar. 
Shut down a cutie down with a baseball. Change your arm, big boy. Maybe you should be with the Giants. Come on here, step right up. I used to play baseball with the Brooklyn Sandlotters. Why don't you try your hand at that baseball game? I think I will. Maybe I can win a cupy doll for my youngster. Come on, step right up. That's right here, you Great baseball for a giant. Now, give me three of them balls. I'll show you what real pitching is. Sure thing, Lieutenant. Here you are. One, two, three. That'll be a giant. Thanks, Lieutenant. Careful of your arm, Lieutenant Mannigan. Remember, you're an old man now. Oh, yeah? Now cut out the kid and then watch this. Hey, better look out, fella. My pal here's cross-eyed. Okay, better I'll stand over here. Oh, one. No, oh, that was just practice. Now watch this one. Oh, two. Nice going, Manigan. Well, uh, the sun was in me eyes. Uh-huh. Uh, but watch this one. Uh, hey, hey, are you so cupid dog? Boy, are you good, Manigan. You hit the proprietor right in the old conk. You sure know you're cupid dog. What was that, Manigan? Hey, look over there. There's a crowd around that tent. Come on, looks like trouble. That door's on. Yes. What's happened? Uh, Tenfold fell down inside door's tent. Hey, anybody hurt? Come on, hey, come on. Oh, no, get back, everybody. Get back. Oh, no, Hold the contact, Mike. Right. We'll have a look inside, will you? Uh, okay, Danny. All right, get back on of you. Make room here. Come on, make room here. Get back on of you. What happened, Dora? Are you all right? Oh, I, I guess so. Oh, a tenfold fell on me as I was sitting at my desk here. Oh, wait a minute. I'll have Manigan call a doctor. You may be seriously oh, injured. No, no, no. No, don't call a doctor. I'll be all right in a minute. Here, I'll get you some water from the cooler. Oh, thanks. What caused the pole to fall? Oh, I don't know. Maybe one of the ropes holding it up rotted through and broke. Or was cut. Here, drink this. Thanks. Oh, that's good. I feel better now. Have those crooked slot machine racketeers been working on you? Slot machine racketeers? Oh, no. No, I'm... I'm sure they had nothing to do with this. Hmm. Have any of them been out to talk with you recently? Well, uh, yes. When? Last night. Any trouble? Well, we had a few words. They wanted me to put some of their machines in. And you refused? Yes. Did they threaten you? Oh, in a general sort of way. But you know how thugs and underworld scum are. They talk big, but... Most of them, it's blood. Yes, yes, I know, but sometimes... Hello, Danny. Oh, hello, Mr. Dawes. Oh, hello, Mannigan. Tell you what, what happened? I'll tell you, going back in the police car. Okay, Danny. Mr. Dawes, you better have a couple of your men you can trust. Act as a bodyguard till I can get some men from the police department assigned to you. In the meantime, we're going to track down this gang of crooks and put them where they can do no more harm. Come on, Mannigan. Back to headquarters. <laughs> Police headquarters, Commissioner Donnelly, upon hearing Dan's story, ordered full speed ahead in a drive to round up the crooked slot machine racketeers. Late that night, Dan Garrett is in secret conference with Dr. Franz at his little apothecary shop. You know, I've got a hunch, Doc, that there's going to be something doing out at the carnival tonight after the crowd has gone home. Yeah, and I suppose the Blue Beetle will be buzzing around out there. Right. And probably nipping, too. Uh, look out he doesn't get nipped himself. No, not a chance. At least not permanently. Not with this Blue Beetle costume and mask. This Blue Beetle chain armor has saved my life many times. As long as I'm on the alert, nobody can overcome the Blue Beetle. I hope you'll always be on the alert, Danny. I'd hate to lose you. Oh, you've been a swell friend, Doc. I owe my life to you and this chain armor you made me. I'm working on something else that will be a great help to you, I believe, in your crusade against crime. What's that, Doc? A fluid. The painted on your body or your suit of armor will make you practically invisible. Hey, have you got any of it here? Yes, yes, uh, but it isn't perfected yet. What's it like? Well, you know that every object we can see has some color to it. Yeah. And as long as that color is in the color spectrum, the human eye can see the object. Yes. But if the object is some shade outside the color spectrum, it is invisible to the human eye. I see. And this liquid you're working on... Outside that color band. Ah, then if I painted myself with this liquid, I'd be invisible. Yes, yes, temporarily. What do you mean? Well, I've got to find a fixer, something to add to the formula which will preserve the invisible qualities of the fluid longer. At present, it oxidizes too quickly and becomes visible to the human eye within a few minutes. Here, uh, here's some of it here in this jar. 
Oh, say, that's very interesting. Well, if you had it perfected, I could use it on this blue... Quiet, quiet. There's someone out in the front of the shop. You stay here, and I'll see who it is. Hello, in there. Is anybody home? Uh, coming, coming. Oh, hello, hello, Officer Manigan. Uh, and what brings you here at this hour? Oh, I was passing by and just thought I'd drop in. Is Danny here? Huh? Uh, no, uh, no, Danny's not here. Well, then I think I'll wait a bit if you don't mind, Doc. Maybe he'll turn up. Well, I, I hardly think you'll find Don Garrett here tonight, Manigan. Hmm. Uh, by the way, have you seen the blue beetle around? The blue beetle? You mean the fantastic character who's always outwitting the police? He won't outwit them forever. Someday I'm going to catch up with that baby, and when I do... Well, I'll... now, uh, if you'll excuse me, I have... Uh, by the way, Doc, some neighbors of yours was telling me they've seen the blue beetle in this neighborhood late at night. What? Would you be knowing anything about that? Well, I, I rarely go out at night. I, I spend most of my time in my laboratory. Is that it back there, that room? Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes. I uh, never saw one of them things. you mind if I take a look around? Well, uh, well I'd rather you... Uh, you see, I, I'm making some experiments. Oh, I and, won't uh, touch anything, uh, Doc. I just want to look. Well, uh, well, of all the... Uh, what is it? What is it? What do you see? Hmm. So, that's a laboratory. <laughs> what a place. Uh, yes. Yes, that's the laboratory. Must be great to have brains like you, Doc. Well, so long. I've got to be going. Uh, tell Danny I was in. Yes, yes, I will, Manigan. Uh, good night, uh, and keep your eyes open for the blue beetle. <laughs> Danny. Danny, where are you? Right beside you. What? Yes, when I heard Manigan outside, I quickly coated myself with your new formula. When he looked into the laboratory, I was standing right in front of him. Well, well that... Certainly was a great test, but the effects are beginning to wear off. I can see a slight tinge of the blue of the blue beetle armor shining through. Hey, Doc, I've got to be on my way. I'd like to take some of this liquid along with me and use it tonight. All right, Danny, all right, uh, but be careful. Remember, the effects fade away quickly. Thanks, Doc. Say, those racketeers will get the surprise of their lives when they hear the blue beetle but can't see him. You'd better hurry, Danny. It's, uh, it's about closing time for the carnival. Yeah. Uh, the blue beetle will have to really ride the night wind tonight. What will the Blue Beetle do over at John Doerr's carnival? Will he run head-on into a band of slot machine crooks? Can he again make himself invisible with Dr. Franz's magic formula? <laughs> <laughs> 